Welcome, friends and families, faculty and staff, current and past board members of the Board of Trustees, alumni and parents and grandparents to these 48th commencement exercises of Green Hills School. Congratulations to you, the class of 2019, for earning the diplomas we are honored to hand you today. After the 10,000 steps a day you've taken up and down Main Street to get you to this moment, you have earned these last few and final steps onto and down from the stage, and you've done so with marked curiosity, creativity, and responsible citizenship, a strong affection for each other, your teachers and your school with admirable achievement, and with what my colleagues and I agree is a fine and endearing spirit. The spirit of our facilities crew and non-teaching staff has been as indefatigable as their energy in preparing all of this for us, particularly in light of recent storms. They are the couple dozen Green Hills employees who work throughout the year to make sure that our teachers and students have what we need for teaching, learning, eating, and playing, and they deserve our recognition, not only for getting us ready for the pomp and circumstance today, but for providing us what we need to teach and learn every day. Thank you. And while you are still their students for another 45 minutes or so, let us all join you in acknowledging Julie Smith and Andy Wickland and all of your exceptional teachers who have brought you to this moment and sit before you today. And we, and we, your teachers, need to also take a moment to acknowledge and thank the people who gave you to us for this brief period in your life and who have given much in providing this opportunity for you. So gr graduates, please join us all in thanking your parents, supporters, and caregivers. The privilege of graduating from this school is indeed something you have earned, but it is also something that has been provided for you by your parents and by people you don't even know. People who have given their time, their treasure, their talent, so that you can have this opportunity. This includes the current and past trustees here today. It includes the thousands of alums whose footsteps you follow as you walk across the stage, and it most definitely includes the founders of our school, one of whom, Herb Upton, we lost only a couple months ago. Our founders saw the promise both in you and in this school, symbolized by their choice of the Green Hills icon, a young spruce tree its branches reaching and growing upward in perfect symmetry and harmoniously with the out of doors. Not surprisingly then, our founders purposely chose a Frank Lloyd Wright devotee and the Michigan architect laureate Alden B. Dow to design our school because of his commitment to buildings that lived like its inhabitants in the natural world and not above it. Our seven founding families chipped in $10,000 each and also chose to, purpose the, to purchase the expanse of land upon which our school was built and we sit today, an estate and sheep farm owned by the Earhart family, previously known as Green Hills. As such, our school colors, spruce green and navy blue, 
were chosen by founder Nan Conlon after her husband, Bill, negotiated the deal with the Earhart family to turn that sheep farm into one of this country's great independent school success stories and schools. Please all join me in welcoming and acknowledging two of the founders of, our, of Green Hill School, Bill and Nan Conlon. Thank you, Bill and Nan, for being here today for our school. And thank you for my boss, Chair of the Board of Trustees, Jennifer Conlin, class of 1979, who was joined this weekend by a smashing number of her classmates who are in town celebrating their 40th Green Hills reunion. Thanks to all of our alums who have participated in this weekend's events, as you, class of 2019, will do in the years to come. And with our alumni support, with all of your support, you'll soon return to green pastures that less resemble a sheep farm than an artificial turf farm. But we have some work to do before you can call yourselves alums. So before we begin in earnest, everybody please take a moment to silence your cell phones and families should note that a professional photographer is positioned to capture today's important moments Thank you in advance for not obscuring fellow guests' views while you take photos during the ceremony. And now please welcome to the risers our upper school choir under the direction of Ben Cohen. Thank you. 
please join me in welcoming to the podium the class of 2019 president and today's student speaker, Mubarak Hassan. Um, can everyone hear me? All right, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for making it here today to support the class of 2019. It's awesome to see how many friends and family members have come from far and wide to be here for the graduates. It really means a lot. For those who don't know me, my name is Mubarak Hassan, and it has been my honor and privilege to serve this amazing grade as their class president this past year. First off, I'd like to thank my fellow class officers, Drake, Harrison, Catherine, and Delenn for their work and assistance this year. Thank you to Ms. Smith and Mr. Wicklund for being great team leaders, as well as the entirety of the faculty and staff for helping us and running things smoothly throughout the year. Last but not least, a huge thank you to the GPO for all they've done. That lock-in was pretty epic. So let's get a nice round of applause for these awesome people. <laughs> these past few weeks, Many people have asked me whether I'd finish writing this very commencement speech, and unless they had asked me yesterday after 11.58 p.m., the answer was some variation of no. Now, during my seven years at Green Hills, I've procrastinated on a lot of things. The eighth grade sustainability action project, every calc worksheet this marking period, the Tocqueville essay, in fact, a push in general, but this felt a little different. The reason I didn't want to complete this speech was that I knew the second I write down that last sentence, it would be like finishing my last ever assignment for the school. As weird as it sounds, I enjoyed knowing that I still had work to complete for Green Hills. Finishing this speech was like saying a very difficult goodbye that I was not at all ready to say. A goodbye that, if it were my choice, I would push back and procrastinate on for as long as I could. I realized, as much as Green Hills prepares us for college and beyond, it hasn't actually done a good job of making us want to leave here. As a class, we've experienced a lot of change, the most drastic of which was the switch from Greenhouse to Griffon. Seven years ago, as sixth graders, we carved out pumpkins with our senior buddies, and this year we became the senior buddies, doing slime time, everyone's favorite Wednesday activity, with the sixth graders. If only we had more borax. <laughs> We've gone from polo cafe lunches to Plum Smart, but never forget about the time in between when we had vending machines for lunch. <laughs> We all had personal paradigm shifts. For instance, I used to think I was the best lyricist in the county, and then Waves came out with Picasso and the Green Hills experience and made us doubt everything we thought we knew about art. <laughs> We've showcased perseverance, whether it was certain students getting lost for hours at the Pinery and having to go full Bear grills, or playing with a ripped spike ball net throughout the year. Persistence is getting kicked out of the forum by Miss Roshi every G period, and still coming back and loudly playing serve if we're watching Anthony Bourdain the very next day. That's dedication. A certain member of the class almost got away with throwing a tangerine against the wall of the middle school locker room. <laughs> but because of Miss Marshall Mum's ability to essentially start a Mueller investigation, <laughs> leading to several indictments and testimonies, this was one of the few instances where perhaps the endurance of a class member wasn't enough to circumvent the establishment. <laughs> We're leaving today with so much more than we came here with but I'm sure some of you still have some lingering questions, questions that probably can't be answered by a poll in the grade group me. Like, has everyone actually completed the rent of junior hours? How in the world does the room number system work here? I still have no idea. What's going to happen to the Southeast Michigan pogle industry when Dr. Gatlin leaves? Okay, maybe those aren't the questions on your mind when you're heading off to college, but they are on mine. And while each of us have our own unanswered questions about what happens next in our lives, there are certain things we know for sure. We've learned that every forum you enter, a gamer corner will just form out of nowhere. It's like a natural phenomenon. Maybe it's just limited to Green Hills. Speaking of gamers, at a retreat earlier this year, we saw a classmate take it a bit too far at Go Comedy. We've learned of a secret place where meetings actually matter. It's on Washna, and it's called Go Where Meetings Matter. <laughs> We witnessed senioritis firsthand and can confirm it's very much real. Just ask Mr. Montesano about his A-period macro class second semester. <laughs> but what we are most certain about is that it's going to be hard to part from the off-white cinder block walls and the classic Green Hills carpet that probably contains every color on the spectrum if you look hard enough. Saying goodbye will almost be as difficult as trying to face and address my classmates when the podium's facing this way, but they're like sitting over there. 
We're, we're getting kicked out of the forum, but this time we can't go back. But it's okay, because we're taking that blue beanbag chair with us, as well as the TV and a few desks. And whatever stairwell we end up watching Kim's Convenience in, we're going to remember how we got there. I'm sure that many of these memories or jokes I've been mentioning have gone whoosh for some of you, simply because they really only pertain to members of this class. But I think it says a lot about what we should be putting an emphasis on as we go forward in our day-to-day -day lives. At ceremonies and events like today, we often get lost looking at the bigger picture, even though it's these small, seemingly insignificant jokes and moments that we hold on to forever. Always try to soak in all these random but positive memories, because one day you're gonna be on a stage like this, wishing you could make more of them. To all the faculty in attendance today, thanks so much for all you've done and had to put up with. We students know we can be a lot to deal with, we just like making your job hard because it builds character. Seriously though, words cannot express how grateful we all are for the role you've played in our lives. We know you genuinely care about us and we sincerely appreciate it. Thank you to all the facility maintenance staff for keeping the school running so well. Also for always retrieving my football the countless times it went onto the roof. <laughs> to all the parents and families here today, thank you for raising us so we could be here on the stage right now. Thanks for sending us to Green Hills, constantly supporting us and being great parents even if we weren't always the best children. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I know personally, my parents have made immeasurable sacrifices just for me to be where I am. If I'm Kawhi Leonard during the NBA Finals, then my parents are Drake, sitting courtside and always having my back, so thank you. <laughs> I... I encourage all of you to always remember those who have helped you get to where you are today and wherever you go in the future. Thank you 2019 for trusting me to be your class president, for having my back, and for riding on this tumultuous but amazing journey with me these past seven years. As Doctor Strange says in Marvel's Infinity War, we are in the end game now. Hopefully, we're leaving Green Hills in a smoother fashion than how Great Britain left the European Union. <laughs> now, I know that oftentimes during these ceremonies, graduating classes receive advice about heading into the outside world, I can't give you advice about the outside world because I've never been in it. <laughs> All I know is what Mr. Gajar's finance packets have taught me, and that it's about time we start considering investing in a Roth IRA and a secured card to build credit. In all seriousness, I've gotten to know each of you. And if you've ever, like me, felt a bit worried or anxious about the future, relax, because as your peer, I can guarantee that you all do extraordinary things. I look forward to seeing what each of you achieve with your sweet, generous intellect. I'm sure every year graduates hear about how their class made such a huge impact on their school, but I genuinely believe that Green Hills won't forget about us for a long time. It's not just the fact that we participate, revolutionize, and demonstrate leadership in every facet of Green Hills life, it's not just because we left it all on the court, field, rink, theater stage, DECA conference, or classroom these past four years. It's not just because we won Stanley back, shout out to the legend Miss Ebeling. Whatever we did, yes. <laughs> Whatever we did, we did it memorably and with a positive attitude, raising the spirits of all who were involved in the activity. Now, we were bound to leave a mark on the school simply because we we're so huge. Like, relative to Green Hills, there's a lot of us. We're basically a walking fire hazard. I mean, whether it's having the uh, assemblies in the theater or just some densos chilling in a stairwell. But even accounting for size, we further improved what it means to be a griffin. We made an impact on the school, and now, and I don't want to be cliche, but it's time we go out there and make an impact on the world. Use what you've been given and what you've learned here to assist others and benefit as many people as possible. We're all going to be given a platform, but I challenge each of you, including myself, to utilize this platform to share our knowledge and resources with others, the same way we've encouraged and inspired our younger peers here. We've all changed Green Hills for the better. If all 91 of us commit a similar energy and passion towards benefiting our communities in the future, just imagine how much of a positive difference we could make. There's, this, is a, this is where a whole new chapter in our lives begins. So, in the words of Mr. Zellers, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Mubarak. Chosen by the class of 2019, this year's faculty speaker is English teacher and class dean, Andy Wickland. Thank you for coming to school today, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to have been selected as the faculty speaker for the graduating class of 2019. When I learned that I would be addressing the Green Hills community to help celebrate this occasion for these graduating seniors, their teachers, and families, I felt humbled, particularly given the great Green Hills educators that have played such crucial roles in mentoring this senior class. Thank you for this incredible opportunity to speak here today. I think it will surprise no one who knows me that I've chosen to draw the main themes for the speech from the familiar terrain of Tolkien's Middle Earth. <laughs> My first time reading J.R. Tolkien's work was in seventh grade. And since then, I've often reread and reflected on the lessons I've learned while vicariously traveling through Middle Earth. Believe it or not, I have read other books <laughs> in my adult life, even in my youth. Some that even compete with The Lord of the Rings as a favorite book. However, if there's one book that introduced me to the power of stories and led me to pursue a career in teaching English, it is Tolkien's masterwork. The first thing that Tolkien taught me is that we need, to per we need a purpose in life. And this begins with creating a personal definition of success. Now for Frodo, serving as the ring bearer obviously brought clarity to his sense of purpose. And Aragorn, as the only living heir in a broken line of kings, also has a transparent reason for being. As characters in a novel, their linear certainty of purpose seems a far cry from our own world where there are infinite paths to tread. If we're not careful, we'll end up abiding by someone or something, else, something else's definition of success. Or as Bilbo once advised Frodo, it's a dangerous business, Frodo. Going out of your door, you step into the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no telling where you might be swept off to. I remember starting my undergraduate studies unquestioningly, pursuing a career path I com felt compelled to follow based on the financial stability it would bring rather than my love for the work. Being as I'm a teacher, I, I think the plot spoiled there. <laughs> <clears throat> But I'll, I'll continue with uh, this story, I guess. <laughs> After a year of college courses that included chem labs and studying Klingon, and some new experiences like living on my own, getting my heart broken, and meeting my new baby brother, I began to understand myself and the world a bit more. And I arrived at a deeper awareness of the path I wanted to take. While material goals can help, me, can help keep me focused by providing measurable outcomes, I found myself agreeing more with Thor and Oakenshield when he finally admits his admiration for Bilbo and Hobbits, saying, if more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. After some soul searching as a college freshman and probably a rereading of LOTR, I changed my academic focus to English and education. Frodo too has an awakening that leads his life away from one defined by the tranquility and material comforts the Shire provides. He finally accepts his role as the ring bearer. He can forestall his fate no longer. In a moment of silent dread and an impasse of wills from many far more wild, worldly and wise, it is Frodo, a simple hobbit, who declares that he will take the ring, though he does not know the way. He realizes in that moment that while he may have desired a more comfortable life in the Shire, that that life would pin his happiness on, perpetually on the hard work of others to guarantee him a tomorrow. But from the very first elf friend, the hobbits meet after leaving the Shire, Gildor, who says, the wide world is all about you. You can fence yourselves in, but you cannot forever fence it out. The hobbits learn, and Tolkien teaches, that we must look beyond our immediate surroundings and align our life's purpose with serving the needs of the larger world. Luckily for us, we're unlikely to face Frodo's doomsday scenario. Yet the sharp relief created by his task also puts a spotlight on another one of Tolkien's most essential themes, the you catastrophe, or the positive catastrophe, 
A veteran of World War I, Tolkien started imagining his Middle Earth while in the trenches. So much of his work crescendos right when it needs to. Tolkien is arguably the most influential author of the 20th century, and it is not because he punishes us with a disastrous, heartbreaking finale. Rather, Tolkien invented the modern fantasy genre and infused it with hope and optimism. Tolkien speaks through Samwise Gamgee in The Two Towers to define what it means to hope. With profound innocence, Sam tells Frodo, it's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end, because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I do understand. I know now. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back. Only they didn't, they kept going because they were holding on to something, that there is some good in this world and it's worth fighting for. While none of us solely bears the one ring and the burden of saving civilization, we will all face our own personal challenges that will have us drawing on our reserves and our efforts to push through those times impact not only our lives, but the whole world. The last final exam in that impossible weed out engineering class the health of a loved one, the daily work to combat climate change, you name it. But Tolkien invites us to per persevere by concentrating our energy on the present and continuing to do what we can. Gandalf tells us that despair is only for those who see the end beyond all doubt. We do not. The last idea, the last idea, this is the last one. If, I, if this were my student's paper, it would get this little lightning bolt that means better transition. <laughs> the last idea I'd like to share from Tolkien's work today is the power of friendship and community. It's right in the title of book one, The Fellowship of the Ring. As I already noted, it's highly convenient for these fictional characters to have such mapped out directions for their lives. Yet Tolkien makes it clear throughout his text, that no one can succeed without the support of friends and loved ones. I think back to the decade of my life that I spent writing music with some of my best friends. I could play guitar for hours on my own, but it could never match the effect of writing or performing music with my entire band. Each of us had different reasons that led us to music, but we all needed each other to fulfill those. The same thing could be said for many of the ways we spend our time college, academics, and work can be very isolating. And it is our closest friends who invite us out of our heads and into the present. I think back to a good friend I met early in my first year as a teacher. We were both first year teachers and shared feelings of being outsiders and pretenders, trying to, trying to seem competent as we began our careers in education. Each day we'd find more in common, share more jokes, tell each other stories. Now. Going on 13 years, we're still best friends, partners, and parents of two beautiful children. Friends teach us about compassion, kindness, and loyalty. <laughs> friends also teach us about ourselves. As Frodo tells Samwise, as they near the fires of Rodruin, prepared to destroy Sauron's ring, with no idea of what may come after, I'm glad you are here with me, here at the end of all things. Wherever you go, I encourage you all to be a friend, to open your heart, to form bonds, for friendship is one of life's greatest gifts. Class of 2019, you are about to enter larger worlds soon with new opportunities and new obstacles. You are poised to do great things that will astound us all, even yourselves. There won't always be a clear path forward, and there will likely be many times when you'll want to turn around and start over. But if Tolkien is right about at least these three messages, that we must define success before we can succeed, that we must hope 
even and especially when life challenges us, and that friendships will nurture not only our own happiness, but, the, but also that of others, we will find ways to improve our world. As you continue your own personal epic quests through this wondrous universe, I leave you with one more piece of Gandalf's sage advice. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Green Hills, class of 2019, good luck out there. Thank you very much, Andy. And now, why we are here. So I ask Associate Head and Head of Upper School, Quincy McLaughlin, to the podium for the awarding of diplomas with the assistance of Head of Middle School, Jonathan Schwartz, and President of the Board of Trustees, Jennifer Conlin, Class of 1979. We begin with Andrew Riley Angled Stevens. <laughs> Alina Rebecca Bardwell. <laughs> Delend Catherine Bauer. Neil Raj Bazaj. <laughs> Maya Sydney Barrand. <laughs> Mitchell Patrick Berg. <laughs> Mira Ann Bagat. Lauren Spitzer. Elise Catherine Blockwitz. Aiden Thomas Brewer. Alexis J. Burke. Miguel Mateo Subajo, Countryman. Beatrice Chen. Alex Wanwu Choi. <laughs> Benjamin Spencer Cole. <laughs> Maxwell Meyer Colas. Mora Mahoney Cummings. Evan Philip DeRose. Jack Mitchellmore DeMarzo. Robert Graham Dittmar. <laughs> Benjamin Thomas Elwell. <laughs> Ooh. 
William Yusin Fan. Giselle Alia Barjo. Sarah Haytham Fayed. Trey Francis Feldeisen. Catherine Elizabeth Ferry. Leo Solomon Freed. Giovanna Marie Galasso. Samuel Shepherd Gargaro. Megan Ann Gager. <laughs> Emily Shira Gitlin. <laughs> Augusta Jahe Guo. <laughs> Samir Hafez. Nazar Atar Hamzavi. <laughs> Mubarak Zahurul Hassan. <laughs> Leanne Elizabeth Henry. <laughs> Ava Jean Hoffman. Jordan Baguer Holland. Harrison Sue. Alexis Paige Hutzik. Kai Angelo Johnson. Maya Murphy Joseph. <laughs> Ryan James Keenan. <laughs> Robert Frederick Keller. <laughs> William Grant Kennedy. <laughs> Kaylee Marie Kingston. <laughs> Nicholas Young Suk Ko. <laughs> Isla Devrim Jahao Kurdok. <laughs> Shruti Lakshmanan. Peter Christian Lastoski.
Harrison Anbo Lee. <laughs> Leah Troopin Mandel. Clara Martin Digon. Garrett Spence Martin. Riley Corinne Meeks. Margot Ruth Mers. Max Morris Miller. Robert James Minor. Ariana Tyne Mystery. Riley Carlisle Noble. <laughs> Jessica Rames Norris. <laughs> Cooper Bednar Page. <laughs> J. Malcolm Ray Pearsall. Joseph Thomas Pinto. <laughs> Riley Elizabeth Pullman. <laughs> Jackson Robert Powers. <laughs> Alex Jeffrey Pinonin. Patrick David Quinn. Thomas Orians Rondo. Luciana Rosania. Drake Stanton Rosenberg. <laughs> Lila Davi Rubin. <laughs> Chido Chashe Veneka Ruende. Eamon Bilal Said. <laughs> Abigail Nell Schmidt. <laughs> Alexander Joseph Schneider. <laughs> Irene Seth. Emma Lily Shermanhaver.
Daryl Stephen Snabes. Zoe Stone. Alexandra Michelle Stryker. Catherine Jane Suarez. Cameron Joseph Tan. William Andrew Urquhart. Vincent Moss Vermeulen. Clara Homan Wellman. Alexander Riley Renault winning. Kevin Wu. <laughs> Jacob Luke Zell. <laughs> Zachary Adam Zimmerman. <laughs> and Taha Zirapuri. Congratulations, class of 2019. On behalf of my colleagues in the entire Green Hills community, and most importantly, on behalf of 48 years of Green Hills graduates, welcome to the Alumni Association. And on behalf of Green Hill School, thank you all for sharing this marvelous occasion with us. Please remain seated during the recessional of the graduates and the faculty. Have a great afternoon.
Thank you.